Welcome back everybody to the F-Zero playthrough. Today we will be doing the rest of the Queen League. I really need to pronunciate that better. White Land, I love this music. White Land, look at that background. It's like so totally awesome, crazy. It's like living in a winter wonderland. And what's going on here? Being harassed and pushed aside by these jerks who clearly have nothing better to do. There we go. Okay, second second tape bad. Well, anyway, a little bit of information on White Land. It says that covered in crystals, this is the most romantic planet in the universe. This extremely demanding course has two hairpin corners that have been coated to block out magnetic fields and downward pull magnets planted near its jump pleats. Well, that's this that's this one. That's the first White Land. What? Did I just spoil it? There's a second White Land? Well, whatever. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter. Because it's the course after this one. Another spoiler. Oh, no. Well, a little bit more information on uh, F-Zero. Let's see. Okay. The reception for F-Zero. F-Zero became part of the player's choice line by selling at least a million copies. F-Zero was widely lauded. At least I think it's lauded. I, last time I said it was lauded, but I don't really use that word. You know, like lauded, applauded, something like that. Lauded by game critics for its graphical realism. I just saw like my car just like bouncing around. <laughs> its graphical realism and has been called the fastest and most fluid pseudo 3D game for its time. This has been mostly credited to the development team's pervasive use of the Mode 7 system. This technique allowed different kinds of scaling and rotation effects of bitmap graphics, which the game used to simulate 3D environments without processing any polygons. The Mode 7 rendering applied in F-Zero consists of a single layer which is scaled and rotated around the vehicle. Critics considered such techniques in video games to be revolutionary at a time when games were restricted to static or flat backgrounds and two-dimensional objects. Electronic Gaming Monthly, or EGM, stated F-Zero use, used the... Uh, um, <sighs> I went so good without stumbling on my words. F-Zero used the SNES's technology to give console gamers an experience even more visceral than could be found in the arcades, which created the most convincing racetracks that had ever been seen on a home console. IGN assured readers that F-Zero was one of the few 16-bit games of its, of its time to perfectly combine presentation and functionality to create a completely new gaming experience. The title was also praised for its music, yay, variety of tracks, and, flipping the page here, multiple levels of difficulty. GameSpy thought the game was something of a finesse racer. Oh, like I said earlier, it took lots of practice, memory, good memorization skills, and a rather fine sense of control. And we're on to White Land 2, which has kind of a deviated version of the first White Land theme. It's kind of like, deeper. Like, just imagine first White Land was sung by, like, some kind of cat. It's like, nee, nee, nee. and then the second White Land, White Land was sung by some kind of jaguar. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I don't know what I was thinking. An author from the Virginian Pilot gave F-Zero an A grade, commenting that the game is more about reflexes than realism, and it just lacked the ability to save progress between races. But why? I mean, it's so short. For God's sakes, I'm covering this entire game in like six different videos. Big deal. Oh, people will complain about anything. Oh well. The thing about this White Land is that, as you can see, there's like little turns, but there's, you know, parts that can hurt you. So you just kind of got to cut through them and just sacrifice a little bit of your, uh, your HP power level. Not gonna say it. Not gonna say 9,000. No matter how much you bug me, I'm not gonna say it. But still, uh, boy, the video looks a little bit choppy, probably because there's a bunch of junk on the screen. Oh well, that's no big deal. Now, another thing about this white land is that there's a gigantic jump that I already went over twice, I really should have mentioned this earlier, right about here, that basically if you're not going fast enough, you will die. And yeah, that's kind of depressing. But still, right when you come off of that big jump, when you make the turn, there's actually, like, another, like, a different track you can see in the background. It's weird, because, like, in White Land 1, you can't see any other tracks, so what the heck is that track? And it's not a part of this track, either, so it's, like, really confusing. 
well, I guess it just adds to the mystique of this game, which is like so totally super awesome. I love that city like kind of thing in the background. It's like an icicle city. There it is. There's the track. It's like an icicle city. That's like cool. Wow, that's a big city. I, I just realized that there's like a whole bunch of parts to it. It's almost like the ice version of Mute City. Wow, look at all that. Huh. I wonder who had the time and effort to do that. Maybe it built itself. Oh well. <laughs> Maybe it was magic. Well, zipping along through this great and awesome track. Ah, pink guy is about to explode on me. Ah, explode on me. Oh, that was another thing about this track that was really, that really bugged me as a kid. It's like, if the computer players don't make that big jump, they just kind of grind along the, uh, the broken part and they don't explode. How come they don't explode, huh? Oh, well. Anyway, after that, that's the fifth track, so you get a little breakdown of all of your tracks, which is kind of like the uh, ending theme, I guess, for this game, even though it's, it's not really the credits. So you watch this. Oh, okay, well, I guess he did make it. Whatever. I could have sworn there was a part where he didn't make it, and you just kind of see him, like, driving along, just very slowly. Eh. Darn game. All these games are out to get me, I swear. And how come Pyko is behind me? What happened to uh, Captain Falcon? Maybe he exploded. Oh, God, no. Captain Falcon exploded. It's the end of the world as we know it. Well, then I get a little breakdown of the Queen League tracks. As you can see, I cheated a little bit. I started, uh, I ran through the tracks once before, but uh, I didn't do as good the first time as I did this time. So, so what is that? I shaved a few seconds off of every track. Super. Oh well. Well, that's it for this part of the F-Zero playthrough, finishing the Queen League. I hope you'll all join me in part five where I'll be taking on the dreaded King League. Oh no, it's getting harder as we go along. Who would have thunk it? Well, see you all then.